You hate ads? I hate ads. You know what I like? Patreon.com slash Inkdependence keeps this blog ad-free. Hey folks, I'm Mike. This is Ink Dependence, and today we're taking a look at this pen. This is the Twisby Go. And the Twisby Go is the lowest end offering, the least expen expensive offering in the Twisby line. Like the rest of the Twisbys, it doesn't take a cartridge or a converter. It has its own ink chamber. This one has an interesting like piston fill uh, plungery system. We'll take a look at that in just a minute. Uh, you have this nice demonstrator construction. I like being able to see this whole weirdness in the back. It is a strange looking pen, but I dig it. Okay, so the cap, as you can see here, bring this up so it doesn't unfocus, uh, is transparent, which is a nice feature. I like to be able to see the nib and all that sort of thing. You can see your ink levels, all that jazz. And it would look weird, I think, if it had a solid cap. Oh, maybe not that weird. I mean, the eco, the eco doesn't look that weird. Anyway, it's got this nice uh, transparent cap, which I dig. You have the Twisby logo up on the top there with those interlocking... Uh, uh, designs and then you have this uh, this other plastic bit inside the cap and that's a cap liner and that is what snaps onto this front piece on your cap like that nice positive click I've never had this come loose it takes a little bit of force to pull it off so that's good has a little lanyard loop here that can double as a roll stop or I guess I should say maybe it's a roll stop that doubles as a lanyard loop uh, but you could use this as a, a necklace pen if you wanted to carry it around hang it off your necklace just pull it off it also says Twisby Go right here it's sort of in the plastic it's kind of hard to see but it's there uh, you can feel it it's got a bit of a bit of a texture. Uh, I will tell you that this inner cap piece works super, super well. I have literally thrown this pen in uh, in, a, in a drawer for months and just forgotten about this thing or in a pen case. Just like, I just forgot about it. It's had this ink in it for like two years. Uh, I think I've refilled it probably at least once or twice in that time, but like for a long time, no problems at all. It doesn't have any problem with staining or whatever. Uh, this is uh, Monteverde Coal Noir, which is one of their their Noir se series, obviously, which is a nice uh, nice black. Uh, through the section, which is um, like vaguely triangular, right there, you can see it's got a vaguely triangular shape. Those triangular bits are actually just these little nubbins around the top. And that could be a little bit uh, annoying to you if you have a grip that goes over the top, if you like to put your finger right on there. I have a pretty traditional grip, uh, all, things, all things considered. But if you hold it further back, it's just round back here. So those things are only at the front. Really, I think they probably could have done away with those and it wouldn't have lost any uh, anything from this pen. Uh, it might have made it more comfortable for more people, but whatever. The nib is uh, kind of like a number five and a half, I think. You don't really want to want to switch this out with too many other things. Although I have seen people online switch in some older vintage nibs, that kind of thing, and it seems to work pretty well. I haven't done it. I like this nib just fine. It's a medium and it's uh, branded or it's uh, marked medium down here at the bottom, the very bottom of the nib right there. Uh, you can also, if you need to, you can pull this nib and feed this whole assembly. You can pull out. If you need to like really blast this ink chamber clean, uh, you can put a blunt nose syringe through there if you need to. I don't suggest doing that because this plastic is, um, like it doesn't feel soft exactly, but like, I don't know, too many like uh, pullings of this nib might not be great for it. So like maybe don't do that too much. All right. Unscrewing this, this uh, sort of smoke colored uh, barrel comes off. They haven't done any uh, solid color barrels for this yet. I know they were talking about doing it, uh, but I'm kind of glad they didn't because, like, this big spring assembly is part of the weird, like, cool aesthetic of this pen, and I think it's definitely worth, you know, being able to see. Uh, this is how you fill the pen. You put the nib. I usually submerge it up to this bit, uh, and, like, I haven't had any problems with staining on this plastic, which is very nice. Uh, you just put this in there and just work this. So all you do is you push this down, and then this big spring, it's a big honking spring, which actually isn't attached. You can, like, pull this down. You can see the collar there, which is kind of interesting. Does it come up? No, it doesn't really come up, but it does come down. Uh, and that forces the piston back up so it doesn't just fall down or uh, you shake it vigorously and it slams the piston down and squirts ink everywhere. I can't really, well, let's see if I can. I might make a mess, but let's see how this goes. Uh, let me, whatever. Let me prepare for a mess. <laughs> All right, so if I, can I get it started? There we go. It does actually, okay, good. Um, so you can see here, when you move this, it moves this piston, this whole shabam. I don't do it too much because it is moving ink around. Uh, but yeah, this is that's how you do it. Just put in the ink and squirt, squirt, or squirt and unsquirt the spring. And there you go. That's all there is to it. It's a very easy pen to use. Uh, and it's, I think, 
It's aesthetically interesting. I wouldn't call it a beautiful pen, but I do think it looks cool and I don't ever mind using it at a table uh, full of my peers or something. Certainly like if you're trying to get somebody interested in a pen, uh, you know, like a younger person perhaps, uh, I think this is a great pen for that because at the price, 18 bucks or uh, 20 bucks, I want to say it's like under 20. So 18, 19 bucks. This is a great introduction to fountain pens. Uh, it lets you use all kinds of bottled ink. You can't use a converter or a cartridge with it for obvious reasons, uh, but that's also true of the rest of the Twisby line. So, you know, whatever. Uh, I, don't, I don't really mind that at all. I love bottled ink. That's my jam. Okay, so some stats and stuff. There you go. It is very light at 18 grams. Uh, the only thing I remember having grams around is this, which is 333 grams is the base of my desk pen like that. Uh, it is heavy. I probably just dented my desk a little bit, but 18 grams is very, very little. It's less than an ounce. So like, I mean, I've sent envelopes, <laughs> like letters that are heavier than that. So yeah, very, very lightweight pen. The nibs are steel. The body and stuff is plastic. The nibs come in extra fine to 1.1. I went for a medium because, uh, well, I wanted to try it out frankly, and that was, um, you know, medium's a solid one to try out. I also really like the fine nibs from Twisby. I think the, the fines are the best, prob probably the best nibs from Twisby, honestly. Um, so, you know, give that a shot. Uh, lengths, capped 13.4 millimeters. That's about five, uh, five and a quarter inches, give or take. You've also got uncapped length 125, which is about five inches long. I think it is a perfectly cromulent length, and it's very, very light. You can you can use this posted with no problem because that cap is so light, it doesn't really add anything. It is a little bit extra long, and so I don't usually. I'll just hold the cap in my hand or throw it down on the desk, and it's just fine. Uh, posted, 173. That's almost 7 inches long. It's very long when it's posted, but it doesn't really weigh much, so who cares? The section diameter goes from 10.8 uh, .8 to 13.9, and that's down here at the beginning, or the front of this uh, pin, all the way back up to here. There is quite a lot of flare, as you can see here, from the front to the back. So uh, there's like uh, three three millimeters of flare, which is kind of a lot. Uh, and then the street price, 18.99, which is... Like, that's not bad, man. There's not a whole lot in that realm. I mean, I think this is leaps and bounds better than that Amazon Basics pen that everybody was reviewing that I reviewed a little while ago. Uh, I think this is just straight up better. It's uh, Is it 10 bucks less good than the, uh, the Twisby Eco? Yeah, maybe. I mean, there's a reason I have like four Ecos and only one Go. I mean, mostly because they only made like three colors of this and I like this one the best, but I mean, if they make more, I might buy more. They're not, they're good pens. Uh, but, uh, you know, I like the, I like the Eco a bit better. So... Let's uh, do a little brief writing sample. I know, keep in mind, if this uh, hard starts, uh, I have been waving it around for the better part of 20 minutes now. So uh, let's see how it goes. Okay, this is the Twisby. Yeah, no real problems. The T the there. Twisby go. Uh, and this is a fine nib. Or no, this is a medium nib. Like one thing I really like about this pen is that it tends to write just fine, even after, as I said, waving around for like 20 minutes, forgetting it in drawers for months. Um, you've got no problem. It keeps up. It's a very nice, smooth nib. Very, uh, very normal sort of medium nib. No weird stuff there going on there at all. Totally good. I think the break point for a lot of people with this pen is going to be the aesthetic because it is a weirdo. It's weird looking. If you like that weird look, cool. You're going to like this. All right, let's look at it next to a bunch of other pens. Okay, so here we are next to a bunch of other things uh, of various uh, sizes and such, uh, including a bunch of the Twisby pens I have. I don't have my five uh, my 530 around here. I hope to be getting that 580 soon. But uh, So here we have the Pilot Prera. Let's make sure these are all done at the bottom. There we go. This is the Pilot Prera, which is a very small pen. It's a bit smaller than the Go. The Go is kind of chunky, even though it's not particularly long. The Twisby Eco, of course, is next to it. Also not particularly uh, huge, but I think the Twisby Eco is a totally normal size pen. So... It's a little thinner, a little longer than the Go. Then you have the Monteverde Ritma, which is a surprisingly good pen with a magnetic cap. I'll be reviewing that one soonish. Oops, pulled it over here. Then you have the Lamy Nex, N-E-X-X, -X, and this is the, uh, the AL version with the aluminum uh, clip and stuff. Uh, then you have the Lamy All Star. This is the copper one from a few years ago. Love that look. And then lastly, the big one from Twisby, the seven, the Vax Seven Hundred R, which is uh, a good bit longer than the Go and, and and bigger like that. Let's take the caps off, show you some of those lengths, and then get out of here. So there you have it. The Go, when uncapped, is a thoroughly normal length. I mean, it's pretty much the same length 
as most of these pens. Uh, it's a little bit shorter than the Eco, pretty much exactly the same as the Lammies, a little bit shorter than this Lammy, a little bit shorter than the 700. Still a bit, good bit longer than the Prera, but this is basically a pocket pen, I think. Okay, so there you go. So this has been the Twisby Go, and I think the Twisby Go is a fun, quirky little pen that you definitely ought to check out. It makes a great first fountain pen, I think, if you can get somebody to use a bottle of ink, which isn't that hard. It's got a fun mechanism, which is cool to scooch. If you want to shoot ink at people, it is, of course, excellent for that. Don't do that. But if you wanted to, this one totally do it. Okay, so there you go. Find this at your favorite retailer. I bought this from Anderson Pens years ago at like a San Francisco pin show, I think. It's kind of been like at least two years ago. <laughs> so, uh, you know, check this out. Go to your favorite fountain pen retailer. Send, tell them I sent you. Like, comment, and for the love of Pete, subscribe. And I will see y'all later on in another review. Peace out.